Richmond, Virginia is home to one of the most historic venues and soccer clubs in the United States. And tonight, two teams look to get their early seasons pointed in the right direction. It's Richmond Kickers and Central Valley Fuego. It's USL League One Soccer on ESPN Plus, presented by Ucrops. I'm Donnie Barnes. Both these teams played in the U.S. Open Cup on Tuesday, and they had very different results. For Richmond, an encouraging 5-2 win over a strong Maryland Bobcats side. Head coach Darren Sawatsky was really pleased with what he saw from his team. He said that they had a number of good individual performances that would make his team selection today more difficult, which is exactly what he wants. Five goals, very heartening for a team that's struggling to find their feet so far in 2024. For Central Valley, a different result, meanwhile, as they lost 2-1 to storied amateur side El Farolito to go out of the competition. El Farolito do have a long history of springing upsets in the Open Cup, so Central Valley are hardly the first to experience that. But head coach Jermaine Jones said that he was impressed with El Farolito's lineup of veteran ex-pros, but he was very disappointed with the types of goals that they conceded. That's been an issue for Fuego in recent weeks having to play a lot of really young players and they've been plagued by big mistakes that have changed games against them over the past couple weeks. Richmond received an unlikely goal scoring boost from Dakota Barnathan in midweek. He bagged a pair of goals against Maryland. This is Barnathan's ninth season in USL. He'd only scored three total goals in all competitions until Tuesday. He almost doubled his career total with that brace. Barnathan missed most of last year with an injury, and Darren Sawatsky talked about how happy everyone at the club is for him. He also said if he wants to score two goals a game, well, we'll take it. Doubt he'll do that again tonight, but he can bet he'll have some renewed confidence after that great performance on Tuesday. Central Valley have been riddled with injuries early this season. They have eight potential starters unavailable at the moment. So keep an eye on Siobhan John Brown, who's had some good moments in his first few games this season. He scored against Union Omaha. He's been aggressive in getting forward and supporting the attack. We'll see if he can provide a spark tonight. The atmosphere at City Stadium is always great, and tonight it's Puffs at the Park. It's going to be another terrific day at City Stadium. Last time these two sides met, it ended 5-4 Central Valley. What kind of fireworks and drama might we see today? Starting 11s and kickoff next. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the high five strangers guy. Game winning interception. First down. Just a nice solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so he can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. So we've decided to sell the house. Oh, yeah? Who's your realtor? Well, it's a Over here, guys, over here. Only $10. Where do I find comps? What is encumbrance? How do I escrow? Here's what I found for Scarecrow. Actually, I've been meaning to ask who you and Paul worked with. Welcome to Royal New Kent Golf Club. Designed by world-renowned architect Mike Strantz, Royal New Kent's a one-of-a-kind Irish-style golf course located 20 minutes east of Richmond, Virginia. Royal New Kent was featured in Golf Week's top 100 public courses in the country. Hidden behind grassy knolls and hand-stacked rock walls, each hole offers several playing options to fit a wide range of abilities. Visit RoyalNewKent.com or follow us on social media for more information on tee times and rates. Remember, come to Royal New Kent Golf Club to Golf Ireland in Virginia. We would not have a business today if it weren't for the support of the many, many people within the Richmond community. To me, we're working as a team to enhance the quality of life for all residents. It's about you know, being the best that you can be. It's about enriching the lives of people in your community. There's a reason why we have the tagline Nourish, because it's really about nourishing the lives of the people that work for us and the people that we serve. That's what the UCROPS brand stands for. Starting 11s tonight for these two sides presented by Impossible Pups. And first for the home side, Richmond Kickers will be in their traditional red kits tonight. Just one change made from their lineup in their win on Tuesday. And that's at that right back position where James Vaughn, or I should say the right side of midfield where James Vaughn comes into that midfield. He's a guy that often sits deep and looks to thread passes between the lines. Keep an eye on Griffin Garnett as well. He's a 17-year-old center back who's 
stake the place in the starting 11 for now for Richmond and is hoping to stay there with another fine performance tonight. For the visitors, Central Valley Fuego this evening, they make several changes from that defeat in midweek against El Ferro Lito in the Cup. Siobhan John Brown was in the lineup on Tuesday, but he moves up top in the striker role alongside, alongside Tahir Vasquez today. Clayton Torr stays at center back. Teron Williams comes into that back line. Again, lots of injuries for Central Valley. Jermaine Jones has had to try a lot of different lineups and a bunch of different formations and tactical styles just to try to find something that works with the players that he has available to him right now. And so we'll see how they end up looking once the game starts and what kind of shape they end up taking once the ball is in play. City Stadium with a good crowd tonight, especially considering it's been chilly in Richmond today with a pretty stiff breeze. Game time temperature around 50 degrees. The wind blowing it around 15 miles per hour. So you can see the fans bundled up, but ready to go on pups at the pitch night. Richmond are ready to go. Central Valley apparently are not just yet. And now they start to come into the picture. As you see, Central Valley are wearing their black kits this evening, those new away black kits that they just debuted a week ago or so. Richmond's back in red this year, much to their fans' delight. Our referee is Islen Pexenar, wearing that green shirt with the black shorts. As he checks his watch and checks to make sure both sides have 11 players on the pitch. Both goalkeepers ready, the fourth official ready. And there's the opening whistle. And we're in motion in Richmond. Which of these clubs can earn much needed points tonight to get their season back on track? Fuego again having to patch together their starting 11 with so many players out with injury or a few others who are still awaiting visas so that they can come to the U.S. and join their club. Both teams have short benches tonight, but especially Richmond, who only have four outfield players available off the bench. So Jermaine Jones' options to change things tactically as this game goes on will be more limited than normal. So he's going to have to hope that for the most part, the 11 that starts this game can begin well and get things done on their own. Bouncing around through the midfield, first touch for Robert Coronado, who does return from injury tonight. That is one big boost for Fuego. Both these sides have struggled with injury absences early this season. Neither has been able to field anywhere close to their preferred starting 11 just yet. Richmond still playing without their star striker Emiliano Terzaghi. They've been without him since partway through last year. That's a bit of a loose touch, nearly given away. Richmond might be in here. Neil Vignal's after it, just taken away from him at a key moment by Mohamed Dabo. Again, that's been an issue for Central Valley as they put this out into touch 90 seconds in. Jermaine Jones said they've generally had Good passages of play in their last couple of league games, which they lost 2-1 to Union Omaha and 3-0 to forward Madison. They said, we'll have these stretches where we're playing all right, but then out of nowhere we make a, a big individual mistake and concede a goal, and that changes the whole game. So Richard, we mentioned playing without Emiliano Terzaghi still. Head coach Darren Zawatsky said he was training this week, but suffered another small setback. So they're still hopeful that he can be in the lineup and in the game in the next couple weeks, but he's still not quite there just yet. As this one's touched forward, a foot race on for it, way out of his goal. Pablo Hara slides and just gets there. Crucial reading and sprinting off his line by Hara. Prevent Fuego an early chance, two and a half minutes in. Both sides having to feel pretty young starting 11s over these early weeks. Both hope that that pays off for them later this year with the experience that those young players are gaining, but there is that inevitable learning curve and those cliched but very true growing pains. A lot of times those involve costly mistakes. This down the right side, a sprint, and ushered out of play, but at the expense of a corner. Yes, this will be the first corner of the match for Central Valley Fuego. James Vaughn pursuing that. It was actually Chandler O'Dwyer. Initially looked like he was going to try to shield it out of play, but got a foot on it. And so the first corner of the match belongs to the visitors. It'll be taken by Raul Mendiola. 
First play for LA Galaxy. And he's played for several other USL championship sides. Early outswinger, left very short. Still almost worked for Fuego. Nearly fell in the box to Teron Williams, who has stayed down for a moment. Here's Mendiola continuing. Back on it by the corner flag. Tried to touch it around a defender, didn't have any help down there. Decent early spell though for Fuego. Again, won their opening match of the season at Tormenta. It looked really good, especially over the first 70 minutes in that one. Had to hang on for a 2-1 win, but that was a great result. Things have not gone their way since then. This is a decent start from them. Richmond's without a point in league play. They've only played two league matches so far. This goes over the top. Flag does come up now against Zahir Vasquez. And so a free kick for Richmond after the offside. Richmond have played two league games. They lost 2-1 at Spokane. That was a huge environment, of course, at one Spokane Stadium. The first ever home match in that club's history. The first ever professional soccer match at that new stadium's history. And so that was a tough environment. Richmond fell behind 2-0 early. So this is a foul and a free kick for the visitors. Richmond did well to come back into that game. We're knocking on the door for a late equalizer, but came up short 2-1. And then falling 3-1 here at home two weeks ago to Tormenta. That was a discouraging night for them. But have won twice in the Open Cup to progress to the third round now. They're hopeful that that 5-2 win on Tuesday can turn out to be a, a good starting point for them to build. As they're on the defensive early here. Fuego, good energy in these early exchanges. This is Emmanuel Gomez, leaving it for Vasquez. Now Robert Coronado. Jermaine Jones said this week that when he has everyone back, he really wants to play in a 3-4-2-1 formation and system. But he hasn't been able to do that yet. He's just had to try different things. This is Siobhan John Brown and then Mendiola, who's seeing a lot of the ball down that right side. Mendiola hadn't played in USL or any professional level since 2020, making a comeback this year. Good feet and good surge between the lines, trying to feed it across in the direction of Siobhan John Brown, who now touches it on to Mendiola, who is offside. But again, decent movement from Fuego, who have started this game well. Long goal kick from Pablo Hara, who's very good at those. That's volleyed forward by Ashkenov Apollon. Pablo Hara's distribution out of the back, that goalkeeper position, has been questioned a bit in these early weeks. Asked Darren Zawatsky about that. There you see the, the short ball played by Hara. And he said, here at Richmond, we ask our goalkeepers to play out from the back a lot more. Hara, of course, was with Tormenta the last few years. He said they had him ping lots of long goal kicks, and long passes out of the back, and he's very good at that. But it takes time for goalkeepers to learn to play with their feet, and Pablo has the ability to do that, but it takes time. So there have been some shaky moments with that in these early weeks. But they expect that to improve as he gets more comfortable in that system. Chance to ping this forward. Emmanuel Gomez plays it short instead to Ron Williams. And Mendiola keeps it moving. Clayton Tor. Picked off by Griffin Garnett, that 17 year old, starting at center back. Maxi Schenfeld, who played for Fuego in 2022. And Hara. Fuego stepping up, looking to press. 
that's neat work as they come through the lines here. And a chance for Chandler O'Dwyer to pick someone out. Drags that back, kept moving by Vaughn. Over to that right side where Simon Fitch looks to advance further. Goes on the underlap and gets the return ball, stabbing it high toward goal, but it flexes onto the roof of the net. I believe the whistle had gone, and I think it's going to be a free kick for Richmond. You heard the whistle behind the play. It is a free kick for the home side, just outside the box at that angle. Let's see if we can see the contact here. Yeah, just a late challenge after the ball had gone. So the first opportunity for Richmond to swing a set piece into a dangerous area. And this is where Richmond have been very dangerous the last couple of years, even as they've struggled otherwise. Set pieces and long throws in the attacking third, they've been lethal. A big moment for Fuego on defense in these opening 10 minutes. Started the game well, Fuego. They can't afford to concede from the first set piece of the match. In from Schenfeld, and on goal, it's under the goalkeeper, and it stays there. Wow, Carlos Aviles just gets away with that. He looked like a hockey goalie there when the goalie looks down and isn't sure where the puck is, and then it's underneath him. Maybe Aviles knew where it was all along, but there was that split second where you weren't quite sure, and I'm not certain he was either. Good ball out of the back then from Aviles. Fuego looking to play it long. That skims off a defender's head. Well done by Hara to claim and keep it from going out for a corner. Good anticipation by the Richmond goalkeeper. We're goalless 10 minutes in here at City Stadium. Richmond looking to play out from the back as they usually do and they turn it over. Chance for Zahir Vasquez putting it into the middle. Didn't really have anybody in black arriving in time. Mendiola was in the vicinity but not advanced far enough to be on the end of that. Fuego looking to cause issues with that press. Richmond aside that always wants to possess and keep it along the deck as much as possible. Oh what a good touch and turn that is. Through the midfield come the kickers, and now Vignoles has room to come forward. Nil Vignoles stabs it on, and it was Bill Hart trying to first time it toward goal. Vital touch by the defender there to take it away. That's what Richmond can do, though. That's them at their best. And they're able to advance it with fast one-touch passing. That's how they want to play. Jermaine Jones play paid tribute to that this week. He said, I really like watching Richmond play. I like their style. Ping forward by Schenfeld. Initial header was won by Arthur Beauchois. He was looking around seeking a foul, but nothing given and on we go. That's thumped out of play then by James Vaughn. Vaughn returning to the starting 11 today, 29 years old, originally from England. This will be another Richmond throw. Vaughn, a guy who can often sit deep in the midfield and break up attacks and distribute between the lines. Richmond's in need of a bit more defensive solidity. Both these sides are after these early weeks. Big battle there in the midfield, and that goes Fuego's way with the whistle and free kick. Not a lot of clear-cut chances in these early exchanges. This is the first of three matches in League One tonight. Coming up in about 40 minutes or so, Greenville Triumph home to Northern Colorado. Triumph off to a great start this year. Northern Colorado still seeking their first win. And Tormenta and Lexington then at 7.30 Eastern. Here, Vasquez wasn't sure where that was, and back with Pablo Hara now. Go, 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 go. 
Mentioned Emmy Martinez still out of the lineup for Richmond. They're also without their two projected starting center backs at the beginning of this year. Nathan Ani and Guy Franca, neither have played yet. Neither have taken part in preseason either. Tony Pineda, another guy that they were expecting to be in their 11, who's not been available. So it presents opportunities to young players like Griffin Garnett. They have a couple other on their bench tonight in Landon Johnson and Beckett Howell, who are also 17 years old. Fuego, for the most part, doing a good job so far as they give away a free kick here, not allowing Richmond to play through the midfield much. Richmond have had those couple little spells where they're able to ping it through and move into that attacking third, but it's been difficult for them. Jermaine Jones has set his team up pretty well over this opening quarter of an hour. Again, the question for Fuego, and we'll get to it in our keys to the game in just a moment, as this is prodded forward and cycled quickly to that right side. Richmond able to get it forward here. And here goes Simon Fitch looking to cross one in. Top of the six yard box, Boshua got his head to it. O'Dwyer leaps for it, and it's going to skid across the end line, and this will be a goal kick. That's going to be that battle. Can the Fuego prevent Richmond from playing through the midfield and working their way into those dangerous areas like they did just there? Well, late contact there. Uh, and this might be the first booking of the match. Let's see. Robert Coronado, the man who committed the foul, you saw him go right over to the referee, Islan Pexinar, and apologize and say, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's take it easy. Well, let's look at it again. Long ball forward from Fuego. Coronado, heavy touch, and then he really clatters into the Richmond player about shin height. That was Zaka Moran that he caught late. So Islan Pexinar takes a lenient view for now. I believe issued a warning, but no card. And now the flag is up for offside. Let's look at your keys to the game presented by CarMax. And for Richmond, adapt to the circumstances. Again, missing players, missing members of their projected 11. Need to find ways to generate results, especially here at home. Have to get off that zero point mark. Looking for their first win since July 1st of last year. For Fuego, meanwhile, their key to the game, also presented by CarMax, avoid costly mistakes. Yeah, it's been a good start for Fuego here over these opening 16 minutes. They've had these good passages of play in their last couple league games, but then they've hurt themselves with individual errors that have cost them goals at inopportune times. And so that's what they have to avoid here tonight. Ball flicked ahead by Siobhan John Brown, but runs out for a Richmond throw. Elsewhere in USL so far tonight, Detroit City in USL Championship stayed perfect on the year. Four wins from four for DCFC. They beat North Carolina FC 1-0. Hartford Athletic held off the Miami FC 3-2 at home. Entertaining game there in Connecticut. Pablo Hara under a bit of pressure from Vasquez, but able to move it calmly. Orange County SC, good 2-0 win for them on the road at Memphis 901. OCFs, OCSC off to a strong start this year. O'Dwyer after this, he flicks it into the path of Boshua. Boshua from an angle, denied by Carlos Aviles. First big save of the match, and Aviles able to make it. It stays 0-0, it's out for a Richmond throw. Well... Here was one of those moments for Fuego. Not really a glaring individual error, but they got themselves in trouble. Aviles had his angle correct. And Boshua didn't have a lot to aim for from that acute spot. Now into the box it goes, and it's the opening goal for Richmond. It's Chandler O'Dwyer. And the kickers, in an instant, claim the opening goal tonight.
It came from one of those throws. We told you they're dangerous in those spots. Serve to the end line. What a good ball in and what a good finish. O'Dwyer scored on Tuesday. He scored again here. It was Simon Fitch who got to the end line. Too simply from Fuego's standpoint. That was far too easy from a throw. They allowed Fitch to get end line and then pull that ball back on a textbook cutback. And Chandler O'Dwyer, who's feeling it now with two goals in two games, putting Richmond ahead. A rocking start at City Stadium for the home side. 1-0. Now down the middle, Mendiola after this at the other end, and good defending by Griffin Garnett, showing his calm again at just 17 years old. Had to get that right. Remember when they last met in the final game of last year, both sides went into that in the middle of very long winless runs, 15 and 14 games respectively, and it was Fuego who ended the year by ending their winless drought with a crazy 5-4 victory here at City Stadium. And that was a game in which Richmond took an early 2-0 lead. This flick on, Mendiola racing for it. Here goes Hara, he's out of his box, has to just shield it out of play. That was calmly done by Pablo Hara. Mendiola causing issues down that right side, as you would expect a former MLS player to do. Well, we're 20 minutes in and it's Richmond to goal to the good. Thanks to that Chandler O'Dwyer tally. that bouncing ball that Fuego have to deal with. Acrobatic half volley clear by Ashkenaf Apollon. Simon Fitch. Richmond looking much more confident now with that goal. Shenfield got a second chance at it and recycles it back for Griffin Garnett. So Dwyer in the 18th minute assisted by Fitch. Forward from Garnett, just a bit too long. Decent idea. Arthur Boshua after it gives the thumbs up. And that's something that Darren Zawatsky acknowledged this week that maybe they might need to do a bit more of. That direct play over the top. He said we didn't do a lot of it last year because we had trouble getting in behind the defense. He felt they didn't really have the speed in their forward line to play those long balls over the top. He thinks they might have that ability a bit more this year. He said especially if Fuego are going to press us then we might need to go direct a bit more. Let's put out a play, and this will be a throw for Richmond. Zawatsky acknowledged that it had been a bit difficult to prepare for this match from a scouting perspective because he said when he watched the film on Fuego, he said Jermaine Jones had played four different formations in the last four games. So he said, I really don't know how they're going to set up or how they're going to play on Saturday. And he said they're just going to have to adapt to what they see. Adapting well so far, leading 1-0, looking for more, but that's cut out. And a scamper forward. See the energy from Siobhan John Brown. Midway through this first half, Thumped down the right side, too heavy, intended for Boshua. John Brown almost had his pocket picked there. Vasquez having to drop deep to pick up the ball along with Siobhan John Brown. They were listed as the two forwards at the start of this game. You see Mendiola is playing further forward most of the time though. Here's Fitch. 
Billhart did well. Adrian Billhart's been great in his first handful of games with his new club. Schenfeld. Richmond would like to see some more attack from this left-hand side. They've been very right side dominant in their early games this year. Darren Zawatsky said that's because they have so much more experience on their right side than they do on their left between Bill Hart and Simon Fitch. He said they've developed some pretty good early chemistry with each other. Their right side is very young. Loose ball, but Richmond winning those midfield battles now after they weren't so much in the first 15 minutes. Vignoles dancing between tacklers, advancing it further. One touch ball almost into the path of O'Dwyer, who is nearly in with a chance for his second. And then the foul here relieves pressure to the frustration of the Red Army and the home fans. But a free kick for Central Valley. Waco playing it long out of the back. It is a windy day. It looked like you could see that ball hang up in the wind a bit. Are able to shift it quickly to Schenfeld. Over 25 minutes on the clock. Dwyer nearly losing it to Mendiola and then does lose it to Vasquez, who's clipped and fouled. And a free kick here for Fuego. Mendiola causing issues, and then Vasquez picking it up. It's a late foot in from Maxi Schenfeld. So what can Fuego create from this kind of situation? We know that Central Valley are dangerous from these. Fuego, if they're going to haul themselves up in the table this year after finishing 12th last season, those set pieces, one of many things that they know they need to improve. Vasquez and Clayton Tor around this. Now this is Gomez that pings it in. Thumped away though by Richmond. It is a throw for Central Valley. It's gonna be a long one from Gomez looking to launch it into the area. Apollon. Surging down that left end line. And into the middle it went. Really good ball after a great run by Ashkenoff Apollon. First time we've seen him spark to life down that left flank. That header was won by Clayton Tor, but with the foul in the process. Aviles, time and space on the ball. O'Dwyer in the 18th are scoring so far. Earlier today, Louisville City defeating Indy 11 5 3 in the first ever nationally televised on network television USL game. Tremendous milestone for the league. That one on CBS just concluded a little while ago. And couldn't have scripted a much better advertisement for the USL. Eight goals in a vibrant atmosphere at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville. And the home side triumphing by five goals to three over Indy 11. Tremendous day for Louisville and for the league. I'm sure Indy 11 will be disappointed, but still a milestone day for them as well to be on national TV. Gave a good account of themselves, even though they fall in that one. That's given away. Here comes Arthur Boschwa for Richmond, waiting for support. Boschwa now sliding it ahead. Bill Hart on his left, looking to skip inside. Had it taken off his toes. Wasn't going to roll out, so Vaughn has to play it and does for Barnathan. 
Mentioned in our open, Dakota Barnathan had only scored three goals in his nine-year USL career before he bagged two on Tuesday in the Open Cup. You can see why when you saw Barnathan there. He's a center back, so he plays at the heart of defense. Doesn't venture forward a lot. Not asked to score goals generally. So to score two in one game, a big night for him. Not something you expect very often. Long switch to the right, decent ball. Wasn't able to be controlled by Brown. Boshua, given away. Robert Coronado, thought about a shot initially, now serves it into the middle. Mendiola was looming, taken away from him. Along the end line, the corner prevented. Given right back to a player in black, though. Out wide. Toward the penalty spot, Mendiola leaping for it. John Brown, first time back into the mix. Defense was there to handle it away. Little spell of pressure now for Fuego as they search for the equalizing goal. Clayton Tor. Dabo. Mohamed Dabo, normally a midfielder, but it looks like he's dropped back into more of a center back role tonight. Perhaps being trusted by Jermaine Jones to play more mistake free at the back than others have in recent weeks. Both sides claiming a foul and a throw there. The throw goes Central Valley's way. With over a half an hour played in this first half. go playing out of the back and they play it straight out of the, into touch. The new era of USL continues on the CBS networks in April. Join us Tuesday, April 9th on CBS Sports Network as Charleston Battery takes on Louisville City FC at 7 p.m. Eastern in a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Final. Oh, this is given away, an open goal, and it's 1-1 taken full of advantage of by Fuego. Robert Coronado, back from injury, on the score sheet. Calamitous mistake at the back for Richmond. They hand one right back to Central Valley. 1-1 in the 32nd. It was Hara playing out from the back, and it was the 17-year-old Griffin Garnett, dispossessed. We talked about these learning moments for these young players on both these sides, and that was one of those painful learning moments for Richmond. And a gift for Robert Coronado and Fuego, grateful for that. They're level away from home. It looks like we're going to have a substitution for Fuego as well. That's Teron Williams who's being taken off and Omar Lemus coming on. Well, that's interesting. I didn't notice Williams having any injury issues. There you see Lemus on the pitch. I mentioned Fuego of a short bench tonight. Started the night with just four outfield players available. So now they're down to three. So they make their first change just over a half hour in, but they're level. One goal each. was given away by Richmond and then some struggles with his footing from Coronado but able to regain. Well, we mentioned the chaos the last two times or the last times these two teams met. 5-4 in the final game of last season. 
And it's been a fairly chaotic opening half hour here. Big mistake by Richmond, allowing Central Valley to equalize. It feels like there's a lot more goals in this. Emmanuel Gomez, and down that left touch line, chance to skip into the box for Vasquez. Dispossessed just as he was about to burst his way through. Taken by Dabo. See a beautiful sunset with those shadows just starting to creep across the field from the left side. Still in the breeze on a chilly evening in Richmond. Let's look at tonight's injury report presented by Bon Secor. See, it's extensive for both these sides. Here come Fuego. Uh, dispossessed was Clayton Torres. He tried to play between the lines. Yeah, Emiliano Terzaghi, Nathan Ani, Guy Franca, Tony Pineda. All unavailable tonight, as they have been throughout the early stages of this season. Vignols. Bit of a tricky one for Hara, took a good first touch, crucially. We have 10 minutes to go until halftime. Viles out of his area at the other end to ping it forward. Vignoles, looking for a foul, doesn't get one. Now Fuego can charge forward. Lemus, just on a couple minutes ago, takes the safe option. Aviles calmly switches from one foot to the other with Boshua closing him down. Well, this will be a free kick for Richmond. That's a silly foul to give away. Neil Vignoles going backward, well away from the Richmond or from the Central Valley goal. He's almost at the midfield stripe, pushed over by Siobhan John Brown. Giving Richmond that free kick and possession of the ball. Shenfield into the middle. Will be mopped up by Tor. Aviles. Under pressure again from Boshua. Handled it well once again. Clipped down the left channel. Read by Barnathan. Richmond kickers without a victory since July 1st last year. Off to a good start. Pegged back a few minutes ago. Vignoles up against a couple black shirts. That spun off a Richmond foot. Central Valley throw as we approach halftime. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Lemus. I would be curious to find out why he was subbed on right after that Central Valley goal. It was 32 minutes in. Switched to the right side, but cut out by Richmond. Shenfeld running into opposition from Mendiola. Hackenberg was able to win the first ball. Fuego then able to possess it, but that was past Mendiola. That was a dangerous 
slide tackle from him in that if he didn't make contact with the ball, that could well have been a yellow, but he did get the ball. Got it just right as it turned out. It was a good first touch, meanwhile, from Ashkenoff Apollon. Darren Zawatsky made an interesting observation this week. He said teams take on the personality of their leader. And Jermaine Jones was a controversial player, and you can see that within his team. They run and gun. They kick you. They're very good on the counterattack. They've got good individual players. He said these are all things Jermaine was. And a lot of fascination around American soccer to see how Jermaine Jones does in his head coaching debut with Fuego. And coming into a very much a rebuilding situation after they finished rock bottom last year. Schenfeld wanted to play it forward, but again being closed down by Mendiola, who's certainly making a nuisance of himself in this first half. That's intercepted by John Brown. Siobhan John Brown has room to gallop forward. Maybe played that earlier than he needed to. Has it back now. Lays it off this time for Heckenberg. Fuego looking for the lead before the half. Clayton Tor. Manuel Gomez keeping possession. See how far up the pitch Carlos Aviles will come for a touch. Mohamed Dabo, Mendiola. Richmond sitting off right now, not pressing. Heckenberg. This has been a confident spell in the game for Fuego since they equalized about 10 minutes ago. It's been a pretty good first half from them. Simon Fitch. Scooping it forward up the right side where Boshua was bundled over. Free kick for Richmond. Darren Sawatsky irate about that foul in the ear of the fourth official. Aaron Zawatsky in his trademark, trademark black tonight. You'll see him in the black short sleeve polo and black belt later this year, but wearing the black overcoat tonight in this chilly weather. Forward from Barnathan. First time touched deftly by Vaughn. That's another classy first touch. And now Schenfeld. It rolls to Vignals. Vignals fronted by two. Vignals, one of the biggest attacking threats for Richmond. Not necessarily to score, although he will do that occasionally. But he's such a good creator. Usually playing in that advanced attacking midfield role. You can tell. Fuego are very aware of that. Schenfeld launching it into the box, looking for the flick on. It's flicked down for O'Dwyer, laying it off for the right-footed strike that's high and over from Zaka Moran. Again, though, Richmond working a dangerous opportunity direct from a throw. They scored just a couple passes from a throw in the 18th minute. That's better, though, from Central Valley's perspective. That goal in the 18th came when they allowed Richmond to throw it directly to the end line and then cut a ball back dangerously that was slammed home by O'Dwyer. That time at least they forced the ball back and toward the middle. You'll usually live with a player shooting from that kind of distance. O'Dwyer standing it up. Out comes Aviles. He dropped it, but the whistle goes for a foul. Richmond upset about that and it's going to be a yellow for descent for Arthur Boshua.
Well, let's see what we see on a second look. It's a good ball from O'Dwyer, clipping it up there. Boshua is trying to not make it easy for Aviles as he went out to claim. He feels he didn't initiate any kind of contact. Difficult to tell from that replay we just saw. So it is the first booking of the match. Goes to Boshua in the 44th minute. Near the Red Army making noise down in that corner for Richmond, as they always do here. It's one of the noisiest, most vibrant atmospheres in USL League One. This is scooped back to Mendiola. Mendiola keeps it moving for Gomez. Being told there will be an additional two minutes at the end of this first half. Stoppage time will be shown momentarily by the fourth official. Lemus over the top down the right side, deftly taken down by Coronado. And then Lemus scooping it into the box. Coronado didn't have space to shoot. Now switching to his right. Coronado, who scored the equalizing goal, going to help it back into the area. Header away by Garnett. I did ask Jermaine Jones about the atmosphere here at City Stadium with such a young team, some of whom might not have experienced an atmosphere like this before, and he said you shouldn't be concerned with the people in the stands. That's to enjoy, not to be scared of. He said that's something as a player you look forward to. Of course, Jermaine Jones played in some incredible atmospheres in places like Germany when he played for Schalke. chuckled and said 5,000 is Schalke's training ground sometimes. He of course meant no disrespect for City Stadium. It was very complimentary of the kickers and their venue. He implied that as a player you have to get used to atmospheres like this and if you aspire to play at higher levels you'll face even much bigger crowds than this. This is a free kick for Central Valley as we head for the final minute of this first half. See how aggressive Fuego choose to be in this last minute of first half stoppage time. Had a good half. Be pretty good about getting to the break at 1-1, especially after falling behind in the 18th. Stoppage time presented, of course, by Greenswell Growers. Heckenberg settles. Siobhan John Brown. Again, was listed at the forward spot in this game. It seems to have dropped more into the midfield most of the time. Long ball forward intended for Mendiola, and out comes Hara to command his box. We'll see if that's the last meaningful attack of the first half. Eckenberg touching it forward. We've had the two minutes now. Referee puts his whistle to his lips and blows for half time. And that's the end of the opening stanza here at City Stadium in Richmond. The home side opening the scoring in the 18th minute with Chandler O'Dwyer. Robert Coronado equalizing off a gift from the Richmond defense in the 32nd. And so with 45 gone and 45 to go in Richmond, Virginia, it is Richmond kickers one, Central Valley Fuego FC one. When we come back with our halftime show in just a moment, we'll of course show you stats and highlights from the first half, news and notes from around the rest of USL League One, highlights from last week's action as well. Lots coming up. Pumps at the pitch night tonight. Both sides striking once, setting up a fascinating second half. Halftime begins right after this. 1-1 at the break. Suddenly that word seems more important these days. 
as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. not have a business today if it weren't for the support of many, many people within the Richmond community. To me, we're working as a team to enhance the quality of life for all residents. It's about you know, being the best that you can be. It's about enriching the lives of people in your community. There's a reason why we have the tagline Nourish, because it's really about nourishing the lives of the people that work for us and the people that we serve. That's what the UCROPS brand stands for. Welcome to Royal New Kent Golf Club. Designed by world-renowned architect Mike Strantz, Royal New Kent's a one-of-a-kind Irish-style golf course located 20 minutes east of Richmond, Virginia. Royal New Kent was featured in Golf Week's top 100 public courses in the country. Hidden behind grassy knolls and hand-stacked rock walls, each hole offers several playing options to fit a wide range of abilities. Visit RoyalNewKent.com or follow us on social media for more information on tee times and rates. Remember, come to Royal New Kent Golf Club to Golf Ireland in Virginia. Back in Richmond, 1-1 at halftime between the kickers and Fuego as we take a look back at week four in USL League One. There were four games around the league and lots of goals as well. And we're going to go over every single one of them as we begin in Charlotte, where Charlotte Independence defeated Spokane Velocity 2-1. They opened the scoring just after halftime. Joel Johnson tucking home a rebound to give Independence a 1-0 advantage. Spokane would equalize in the 72nd second minute as this one played across the face of goal and bundled home by Heal. But it was Charlotte Independence very late in the 96th minute, right after Spokane thought they should have had a penalty. Charlotte went up the other end of the pitch. What a good finish. Alvarez tucking it away into the corner. Luis Alvarez providing the margin of victory for Charlotte. Meanwhile, Lexington and Greenville, this was quite a turnaround. Lexington played so well for the first hour. They took a lead on Cano's goal just before halftime. Isaac Cano in the 45 plus four. And then in the second half, Lancaster in the 57th minute. Cameron Lancaster off this nice cut back from the end line. First timing at home. Lexington were cruising. They were 2-0 up, and then suddenly they weren't. In the 65th minute, Zakowski started to come back for Greenville. There would be a red card that saw Amal Knight sent off, and uh, there would be an equalizing goal for Greenville as this was driven home past the keeper. Then forward Madison, a 3-0 victory over Fuego. All three goals for forward Madison coming in the first half, and the last two coming just before halftime. Fuego played pretty well during stretches, but some breakdowns defensively, allowing those couple goals that saw them in a big hole that they never recovered from. In the final game last weekend, a 1-0 win for Knoxville over Tormenta. Kelly Rosales scoring in the 36th minute. Angelo Kelly Rosales and his teammates then keeping Tormenta out in the second half. Some good saves as well. And one Knox, perfect so far in the year. Three wins from three. The boys in orange and blue. Those were our scores and highlights from week four in League One. Let's look at the first half stats from this game here tonight. One goal either way, six shots for Richmond, two from Fuego. The possession 58 to 42 percent in Fuego's favor. Just the one yellow card that was shown to Arthur Boshua in the 42nd minute. Not a lot of corners either, just the one, which is unusual for a half. But 1-1 one, one at the break, that's the stat that matters. In a moment, more from halftime. We'll preview the League One Cup and talk about our team of the week and news and notes from around League One as well. Two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, sweet. I said what I said. I don't care. I paint the town red. Horses 
are broken free from the fields They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. You can see it in my eyes. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. Shakes, Malloy! Oh, what a debut goal! Charleston rolling it home! Serrano! Serrano scores! There's the dagger! Lobo all three points! Continuing at the halftime, 1-1 between Richmond and Central Valley. USL League One has a new in-season cup this year. It's now the Jägermeister Cup. And for more on that, here is Mike Watts. In 2024, USL League One will introduce a new in-season cup competition built on regional rivalries and added dimensions to the game itself. Like cups around the world, this new tournament will consist of group play and a knockout round. The three groups of four will consist of the East Group, Charlotte, Greenville, Richmond, and Tormenta. The Central Group, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Lexington, and Madison. The West Group, Central Valley, Northern Colorado, Omaha, and Spokane. The clubs will play a home and away round robin within their group. Then they will play two matches, one home and one away, against two different teams from another group. In total, each club will play eight matches in group action. The top team in each group will advance to the semifinals, joined by the non-group leader with the most goals scored. This innovation will encourage more attacking and entertaining play. That's not the only fun adjustment. If a group stage game finishes tied at the end of regulation time, a penalty kick shootout will take place with an extra point in the standings on the line. The cup will evolve and grow over the next few years, bringing more drama and more memories for all. Fun stuff coming up with that Jägermeister Cup. News and notes elsewhere from around the league. 
April 9th on CBS Sports Network, Louisville City and Charleston at 7.30 Eastern as the league continues to be showcased to more and more people across the country and around the world. New expansion team coming soon, Buffalo Pro Soccer announcing last week they're joining USL Championship by 2026. And eight teams from League One advancing to the third round of the U.S. Open Cup. Great showing from League One so far. That third round will be on April 16th. Team of the Week from USL League One for Week Four. See Bert Shipman in that goalkeeper spot. A few members, actually five members, of that forward Madison squad after they defeated Fuego by three goals to nil. Brandon Fricky as well. Liam McKinnon, another strong showing for Greenville Triumph, who looked really good in general. Jorge Corrales at that left back spot. Nick Spielman continues to do well in Charlotte. He's such a great story. Wasn't even expected to make their team going into last year. He was a trialist. Started for them the entire season. Off to another good start this year. Luis Alvarez was the player of the week. Rick Wright of Greenville, the coach of the week. Appropriately enough, is that side in their first year under Rick Wright's tutelage in the post-John Harks era, getting off to such a strong start this season. Scores from around the rest of the league, Greenville and Northern Colorado just getting started. South Georgia, Tormenta, and Lexington in about a half hour from now. Next Friday, one knocks home to Union Omaha and Charlotte facing Greenville. Next Saturday, Ford Madison against Richmond, the first edition of the Henny Derby this year. Always look forward to that. And later next Saturday, Fuego home to Chattanooga. A couple teams that haven't had a chance to actually play very much this League One season will be in action next weekend. We'll wrap up halftime and get you set for the second half. 1-1 between Richmond and Fuego here tonight. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the high five strangers guy. Game winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so he can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Welcome to Royal New Kent Golf Club. Designed by world-renowned architect Mike Strantz, Royal New Kent's a one-of-a-kind Irish-style golf course located 20 minutes east of Richmond, Virginia. Royal New Kent was featured in Golf Week's top 100 public courses in the country. Hidden behind grassy knolls and hand-stacked rock walls, each hole offers several playing options to fit a wide range of abilities. Visit RoyalNewKent.com or follow us on social media for more information on tee times and rates. Remember, come to Royal New Kent Golf Club to Golf Ireland in Virginia. Health, suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider to... First half highlights here from Richmond. This early throw in the 18th minute led to Richmond's opening goal. It was thrown toward the end line. You gotta defend better there if you're Fuego. It's so well done, combining between Simon Fitch and Chandler O'Dwyer. But then Richmond unfortunately gave it right back 14 minutes later, given straight to Robert Coronado. Good finish from him into the open net. And it was 1-1. That's where we are coming out of halftime. Neither team fashioned too many clear-cut chances, but both teams took advantage of theirs. And here we go for a half number two. Richmond in their all-red kits. Central Valley in all black with the white numbers. It'll be Richmond kicking from left to right in this second half. Our referee remains Islen Pexinar. Here we go, half number two. Again, both these sides desperate for a positive result tonight after a tough beginning to 2024. And so this second half crucial for both of them in these early stages of this season. Nil Vignol's an early touch that runs away from him. 
This will be out for a throw for Fuego. Just underway in Greenville, no score between Triumph and Northern Colorado a few minutes in as we have an early free kick for Fuego, 30 seconds into this second half. Richmond without a point so far this year. This is only their third league game. League very uneven in terms of games played right now. We've had some postponements and just some uneven schedules. So tough to get a, a really clean read on where each team is just yet. But anytime you're sitting on zero points nearly a month into the season, you start to get a little uneasy. Here come Fuego, though. Their first attack of the second half by the end line, trying to skip past. Did that go out of play? Apparently not, but dealt with by Richmond. Good positive play by Omar Lemus getting forward down that right side. Remember, Lemus came on in the 32nd minute right after Fuego scored their goal. Here's Emmanuel Gomez. Ashkenov Apollon, who had a couple surges down that left flank in the first half. Something that you would like to see him do more of because he does look very dangerous and very quick when he does. You wonder if Jermaine Jones has asked him to stay solid and remain on defense a little bit more. Of course, anytime that left or right back makes that long run forward. You do leave yourself vulnerable if you lose that ball in transition. So that pass misfires and goes out for a Richmond throw. So that's always the risk when that fullback goes crashing forward. But it is fun to watch Apollon when he does sprint forward. Very quick, very direct. Has the ability to beat people on the dribble and serve in a good cross. So just from a neutral fan perspective, You'd like to see him do that a bit more. But of course, there are other considerations than just our pure entertainment. Pablo Hara in the middle of the park. Mendiola sprinting after it. Griffin Garnett back for Barnathan. Unfortunate to see Garnett victimized for that mistake and that goal in the 32nd minute. The 17 year old has generally looked so good early this year. Darren Zawatsky praised him in our call this week, along with a couple other of their young players who've gotten significant minutes in the early going this season. Yet those mistakes, part of the process for a young player, especially one thrust into the spotlight this early. It was something Jermaine Jones talked about quite a bit this week as well. He has a number of players that are fairly recently out of college in the U.S. or were playing at much lower levels before this year. A little feistiness there, and a card comes out. It's going to be against Richmond's James Vaughn, who is the second player of theirs into the book tonight. Fuego still haven't had a player booked yet. Arthur Boshua, remember, was cautioned shortly before halftime. the announcement of Vaughn into the book. Jermaine Jones saying this week, you're allowed to make mistakes. You have to learn from the mistakes. He said he's told the team, it rains for now, but the sun will come out soon. He also said it's not easy, but we have to stick with each other. Well, they've stuck in here after falling behind in the 18th. Now they're in search of a lead. Are able to sprawl on that. Nearly five minutes into the second half. All right, taking one of those long kicks forward that he's very good at. Adrian Bilhart, who didn't see a ton of the ball in the first half. I think Fuego did a pretty good job defending him and marking him in the opening 45. Bilhart scored their first goal of the season. That got them back in that game at Spokane. Threatened a couple others in that game. He's been one of their best attacking players so far this year. This is given away to Vasquez. So here Vasquez advancing and bringing Mendiola into it. 
And then returning for Vasquez, who tries to chase it down by the end line, does keep it in play for now, but then cannot. And it is a goal kick. It's a good combination play, though, between Vasquez and Mendiola. You can see what Mendiola adds when he's able to be on the pitch for Fuego. A lot of experience and class on the ball. Been another pretty positive start from Fuego. Started the first half reasonably well also. Had that lapse in defense that allowed Richmond to get to the end line straight from a throw and cross in for the goal. Generally minimized their mistakes so far. Have to continue to do that, obviously. Here's Vignoles, though. A bit of space for him to come forward. He hasn't found much of that tonight. Serves it on the left for Schenfeld, and Schenfeld's ball into the middle goes over everyone. It's going to be tracked down by Simon Fitch. James Vaughn, Bill Hart, Vignoles. Vaughn again. Vaughn oh, serving it back post. Good ball in, on goal with the header. And there's Carlos Aviles. Good passage of play from Richmond. Stood up very well. And the header was pretty strong and on frame. Avila is well positioned again, though. Vignoles. Neat ball on the right, switching it to Fitch. Quickly for Bill Hart. Better ball movement now for Richmond. Bill Hart looking to serve it in. Does so low. Kind of an awkward one to deal with. I think it took a funny bounce on Mohamed Dabo. Able to deal with it eventually. Going to be a Richmond throw. Let's see that chance a moment ago. It's Vaughn with that nice swung ball to the back post. I think that was Boshua who rose for it. Boshua's a big threat in the air. Didn't play much last year. He was injured most of the year with Tormenta. 2022, he unfortunately missed a fair amount of time with injury also. He scored some pretty impressive headed balls. Now Bill Hart. First time for Fitch. Bill Hart goes on the overlapping run. Fitch now uses him. Bill Hart trying to chase it down, cannot. Fitch putting a bit too much on it. Goal kick. <laughs> Bill Hart looks a little frustrated. It's tough when you make that lung bursting sprint forward and then your teammate doesn't quite give you the ball you were hoping for. Mendiola, what a good first time touch that was and that springs the teammate down the right. Fuego using that speed, but then not able to make the subsequent pass. That's unfortunate. Omar Lemus was in a good position there. They win it back though. Here's Siobhan John Brown. Into the middle, Richmond had a body there. Turned back over though, Gomez. What can he make from this? It's Apollon making that run down the left. Apollon's cut back all the way through. Comes to the top, Siobhan John Brown squares it. And the strike is wide. Chris Heckenberg, it was tough to tell for a moment. It looked like that might be net bound, but Heckenberg couldn't bend it inside that far post. Dangerous sequence though from Fuego, threatening to take their first lead of the night. Moments like that, you can really see what Jermaine Jones is trying to mold this side into. He told us before the first game of the year at Tormenta, they want to be a side that's fast and aggressive and that gets forward at every opportunity. And when they're able to win that ball back and move it like that, that's exactly what they do. And we saw a lot of that against Tormenta. It was very impressive. Haven't seen as much of it from them the last few weeks. This has been a much improved performance tonight. That is out of play as Vasquez had it go across the touchline. Hara left stranded by a teammate with that ball. He has another to help out. That's Garnett. Awkward moment for Richmond. Forward again, it takes a kind bounce for Richmond and they can use it. O'Dwyer, and then he felt he was fouled. He was, says the referee. Free kick for Richmond in front of their own bench. 10 minutes gone in the second half. 
And it's taken quickly and O'Dwyer can continue. Puts it into the box and just past the slide of Arthur Boshua into the arms of Aviles instead. Well worked by Richmond and they almost caught Central Valley sleeping there. They did really. And the Fuego fortunate that cross didn't connect with Boshua who just needed a touch. It's a bit of a dangerous ball back Dabo. Good first touch to take it away from Bill Hart. Bouncing ball forward. Hara, simple for him in the end. 13 minutes gone in Greenville, nil-nil between Triumph and Northern Colorado. Tormenta and Lexington coming up in about 10 minutes. Other action around League One tonight. Ooze from the crowd. <laughs> Some nifty handling from Maxi Schenfeld. It's a very savvy crowd here at City Stadium. They appreciate good skill. Their team turns it over here. Bouncing ball, shouts for handball from Central Valley. They don't get it. Avila is looking to calm things down for Central Valley. We don't necessarily have to go all out for a win tonight. A point, especially after a long road trip like this, would be a pretty good result for them. Richmond, of course, desperate to break that winless run since last July 1st. I think they would be the more disappointed with a draw tonight. Long way to go in this game for it to swing one way or another. Here's Apollon. Lots of space for him, and he takes it. Apollon still moving forward. Now to Emmanuel Gomez. Dabo. Clayton Tor. Coronado. Nice overlap on the right side. Space for Lemus. Lemus is crossed. It's 2-1. Flicked home by Zahir Vasquez. And Fuego have turned this all the way around. Fell behind in the 18th. Equalized in the 32nd. And now they're ahead in the 58th. Gorgeous movement, fast transition from back to front. And what a deft flick home this was. The charge from Lemus and Vasquez, that's so good. The diving header at the near post had to be perfect inside that far post. That's a tough angle. What a good finish. Zahir Vasquez paying off the potential that Fuego have been showing today. And they have themselves in front for the first time tonight. That was electric. And that's what Fuego can be. With all their injuries, with all their absences, the players that they don't have yet, that they're waiting to arrive with their visas, all the players they have out injured. This is impressive from them so far tonight. And now Richmond need to respond and they're going to respond with a double change. So this double change is Joao Gumiro and Ryan Sirikowski both coming on for Richmond. Arthur Boshua is removed along with James Vaughn. So Sirikowski and Gomiro for Vaughn and Boshua. And Richmond need to attack now as they've fallen behind. That could open up opportunities for Fuego to break. Could open up opportunities for chaos at either end. This is turned over to Vignals. This is a great game now. Really interestingly poised from a neutral standpoint. Frustrating for Richmond, I'm sure, having gone ahead. They took so many leads in the second half of last year during that long winless run. Lost 22 points from winning positions last year, which was by far the highest in the league. This is another game so far, although they have a half hour plus to turn it around, but another game where they led early. Bill Hart, great ball in, and the flag is up for offside. That was intelligent movement though. Sirikowski just on the pitch. Good idea from him, just a bit too early with his run. 
We saw him and Bill Hart combine neatly there. So a flash of their potential partnership over these final 30 minutes. And Fuego knowing very well that despite taking the lead, they are far from home just yet. Playing almost a coast away from home tonight after a long trip across country. Not the best ball out from Avila is given straight to Bill Hart, who can roam forward again. Into the middle for Vignoles, who surges further forward. Vignoles spearing it forward. Bill Hart 2-2. There's an instant response from the home side. They made the double change. It pays off just two minutes later. Bill Hart's great start to the year continues. All square again in Richmond. What great movement, and Vignoles at the heart of it again. Look at this ball, clipped with the outside of the foot. Great first time finish from Bill Hart. What great goals we've seen at either end in the last few minutes. It's another chaos game at City Stadium between these two sides. Who would want it any other way, other than both head coaches? It's a heavy challenge as Moran cleaned out Heckenberg. So Dwyer opened the scoring for Richmond in the 18th. Coronado equalized for Fuego in the 32nd. Vasquez gave Fuego the lead in the 58th. Bill Hart just equalized for Richmond in the 61st. And we are far from done tonight. Talked about that 5-4 game here last year quite a bit already. <laughs> that was almost given straight to Vasquez. I did ask Darren Sawatsky about his memories from that game last year. and He uh, indicated that he did not enjoy it at all, even though he knew the neutrals did. He said for him and for his team, it just put the exclamation point on what was a really difficult second half of the year and ending to the year for them. This is a free kick for Fuego. He said, anytime you score four goals at home, you think you're going to win the soccer game. But he said that game really put an exclamation point on a tough season for the guys. We're digging our way out of an early hole this year, but I'm way more optimistic about it. So right now, we have a man down for Fuego who will need some attention. So 63 minutes gone, two goals apiece at City Stadium. Let's see if we can see what might have happened here. Yeah, that was Emmanuel Gomez who went down. Vignoles making the challenge. Remains goalless between Greenville and Northern Colorado. 21 minutes in there. Nil-nil between Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay in the 22nd minute in USL Championship. That's the only game in progress at that level. Fuego are about to make another change as Emmanuel Gomez apparently won't be able to continue. He's going to be subbed off for Joshua Fawole. Has made some starts in the midfield and at the forward spot in the early going this season. Comes off the bench tonight. So two subs apiece, two goals apiece with 25 minutes plus stoppage time remaining. Clayton Tor, surge forward from him. And he loses the ball, but a foul committed. Darren Zawatsky and Richmond frustrated at that. They were away otherwise. The whistle goes in Central Valley's favor at that time. 
Well, if you can't watch the match, and that would be a pity on a night like this, you can turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus, you can hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Saka Moran wins that free kick, and he demonstrably wants a card shown, and he gets it. This is the first card of the night shown to Central Valley. And it is Joshua Fuole, just off the bench a couple minutes ago, almost immediately into the referee's book. Look at it here, it's a heavy touch from Fawole, and then he just cleans out Moran from behind. I don't think he can have too many complaints. The contact wasn't overly forceful, but it was the direction of the contact. And I think made Islen Pexenar decide that that was worthy of a yellow. Fuego almost getting themselves in trouble. It is that kind of game where you feel like either team could either score a brilliant goal or hit the self-destruct button defensively at any moment. Which again, from a neutral standpoint, is wonderful. From a coaching standpoint, is a bit of a nightmare. Both these teams very much in the growing phase. Dabo won it back briefly. Bill Hart tenaciously takes it away and spreads it to Vignoles. Angles his way inside. Moran. Schenfeld forward. Not able to pick out a teammate in red. All Golds tonight presented by Uptown Alley, and they're getting their money's worth this evening. Richmond substitutions presented by Beatbox RVA. Apollon, did that ball go out of play? Looked like it might have. Linesman on the near side though said no, on we go. And that's given straight away to Siobhan John Brown who had a crack off the half volley. Did not connect cleanly, needless to say. Eventually results in a goal kick. The Red Army enjoying that. A little spell over the last few minutes where everybody can catch their breath. Mendiola lost out eventually, and now it's Fitch. Fitch motors on the right. Gave it along for Billhart, who's drifted out wide for now. Vinny also will drift everywhere. Fitch. This is more the type of game Richmond want to play. Possession with control of the ball and control of the tempo. Able to switch it from side to side, try to pull the defense apart. When they were at their best in 2022 when they won the Players' Shield, this is the kind of thing they were doing all the time. And they make this sequence pay off. Lots of space for Fitch. It's Fitch lining one up, and he would expect better from himself. Well over the bar. Goal kick for Fuego. But a great sequence from Richmond. Boy, Fitch had lots of time. And you can see how upset he is with himself. As he was unable to keep that remotely down. The USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golazo Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. There 
is a player down for Fuego. It looks as though there might be an issue with Cramp as the clock ticks past the 70 minute mark. We'll see if Fuego might need to make another change. Fuego are readying another substitution, we're told. And this would be their final one of the night. Again, I told you a couple times, they only started the night with four outfield players on their bench. As a visiting team, you can have, well, up to seven if you don't carry a backup keeper. Nobody does that, though. So usually you have six. So if you only start with four, that means you're very short-handed, and they certainly are that, as we've outlined multiple times tonight. So we'll see who the last player or players off their bench are. They have Abdul Razak Cromwell and Angel Ruelas left on their bench. That is Coronado, who was down with that issue. Coronado scored their first goal of the night in the 32nd minute. It is Abdul Razak Cromwell replacing Robert Coronado. So even though that's only three players that Fuego have substituted on and off tonight, that's all three of their substitution windows. So unless there's a loophole in that rule that I'm not aware of, I don't believe they would be able to bring on Angel Ruelas if they wanted to. Now, if this were a knockout game and a cup competition and you had the possibility of extra time, then you get an extra sub in extra time. But that's not a factor in a league game like this. So Cromwell on as this runs through the midfield and can be settled by Richmond, and they have a chance to pour forward again. This is Bill Hart with Fitch in front of him. Bill Hart chooses to slow things up for the moment. Kickers looking for at least one more as they seek their first win in 280 days. And if you're a Kickers fan watching, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it. Tired of hearing about July 1st. But it is a factor. And here's Bill Hart. Bill Hart dragging it. Bill Hart still. It came off a defender. Falls for Vignoles. Blocked again. Second ball. There it is. 3-2 Richmond. They've turned it around now. They led 1-0. They trailed 2-1. Chandler O'Dwyer has a brace. It's 3-2 to the Kickers. Bill Hart got the second crack at it. Came off one defender. Vignoles blocked again. What a first time hit though. Fell to O'Dwyer. He's so full of confidence now with three goals in his last two games. Scored on Tuesday, scored twice tonight. And now the kickers are flying again. Looks like the referee has sent both players to their respective benches following that goal. See Central Valley have chosen to huddle up in the middle of the field as the kickers go over to Darren Zawatsky. Not sure what the issue is. Is there a player for Richmond who's dealing with an issue? Anyway, Darren Zawatsky. with his team having another lead to hold on to. And uh, for Richmond, still a ways to go in which to hold on to it or try to build on it. And this is a situation they found themselves in many times last year where it slipped away. But having gone 2-1 down in the 58th minute, they have to be thrilled to have gone back ahead with back-to-back -back unanswered goals since. It was so crucial for them that they got level so quickly, less than three minutes after Fuego had taken the lead. Bill Hart again at the heart of things, along with Nil Vignoles. Those two are such a good combination. 
Boy, if Chandler O'Dwyer can start stroking them home the way he has Tuesday and tonight. And Tuesday's goal, you saw it in our open. It came from a goalkeeper error, a heavy touch by the Maryland Bobcats keeper who presented it straight to O'Dwyer. And credit to O'Dwyer for closing him down and putting himself in position for that tap in with his hustle. That's something you don't want to take for granted and you shouldn't, but still, it was one of the easier finishes he'll ever have. Two very good finishes tonight. One on that end line pullback from Simon Fitch in the 18th minute. And this one even better, by far the best of the three in terms of technique, that first time volley as it came to him. And that's so important because you're not gonna have a lot of time at the pro level. When a ball falls to you like that, if you need an extra touch or two touches, usually the defense will, call, will close you down. A lot of times your shot will then be blocked. So the fact that he was able to hit it that, that first time and hit it true and accurately into that far corner, so good, and so vital for Richmond. And now it's Fuego who again have to pick themselves up and still have time to do it. They did it in the first half. Do they have another comeback in them? In another game in which they've played pretty well for stretches, it's gonna be a free kick for them here. Interesting to see how Richmond play this tactically over the final 13 minutes plus. Did they sit back and try to defend deep? This is flick forward, good ball down the right. Lemus, who set up that goal in the 58th, might fall for Mendiola, it just ran away from him at the key moment. Mendiola let it run toward his left foot, but I think it rolled further than he anticipated. But another sign that Central Valley are hardly out of this. Joshua Fawole, who hasn't been involved much since coming on, other than picking up that yellow card, turns it over to Moran. And Moran scooping it toward Bill Hart, racing over and seeing it go out of play was Dabo. So 12 minutes and change remaining. Clayton Tor, ball forward intercepted. Vignal's classy ball from him, but that second ball runs away and Mendiola, free kick for Richmond this time. And now it's Central Valley's turn to be upset because they thought they were in. Well, eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. eFootball's free to play. Download now. Forward from Hara. Put out into touch. Richmond would dearly love a fourth goal and a multi-goal cushion. They'll be tired of hearing me talk about the 22 points they dropped from winning positions last year. Here they find themselves in a winning position again early in 2024. Can they do what they failed to do so many times last year and close a game out for all three points instead of one or none? Darren Zawatsky has acknowledged that one of the issues they had last year that led to so many drop points was a simple lack of depth. He felt their first 11 was up there with anyone's in the league, but they sometimes struggled once they had to make changes in games. Almost runs through for Bill Hart, taken away from him though, and can be played 
initially by Cromwell, but then he turned it over. Shouts for a free kick there from Richmond. They don't get one, and now Siobhan John Brown is sprinting the other way. Line splitting ball. Back heel flick by Apollon, and now runs onto it. Pass just forced Apollon to retreat a bit. Clips it backside. Leaping, and letting it roll all the way through. Here's Lemus. Siobhan John Brown, past the 80 minute mark. Another night of drama and chaos at City Stadium between these two sides. Swung toward the top of the area. Mendiola let it run, and it did run all the way to Fawole, who then couldn't control it. Fawole was just trying to turn the corner and unleash a strike. Scooped back into the box in Fawole's direction. O'Dwyer back defending with his two goals tonight. Hustles it away, and then took the contact and wins a free kick. Fawole's got to be careful. He's on a yellow, remember. Red Army very conscious of that. They're barking for him to be sent off. Griffin Garnett, credit to him, made that big mistake in the 32nd minute. It's a terrible moment for a 17-year-old defender. But he's recovered well, and he's played well since. And that's the sign of a, a mental strength in a young player, especially in a young defender that I'm sure will please Darren Zawatsky. Good flick to keep that ball in play. Sirikowski then has it back. Now a free kick for the visitors. That clock ticking away though. Carlos Aviles long. Fawole wins the header. Mendiola chases after it. Keeps it in play. Pulled back. Nearly ran along into the path of Vasquez. Fuego created a lot of danger down this right side. Especially in this second half. But Richmond have it fall to Simon Fitch. Now he has Billhart and uses him. Bill Hart puts his foot on the ball and slows things down. Can Richmond manage leads this year when they get them? Richmond, who like to generally play an up-tempo game, this is the time in a game and the situation in a game when sometimes you want to slow things down. Maybe take some of the vitality and some of the excitement out of it. Hara. Cromwell. Tussling in the midfield. Great work by Vignoles. Well, he's called for the foul. Free kick for Fuego. Vignoles mystified at that call. Thought he had just wrestled himself in front of the ball and put himself in a position to be fouled, but maybe he committed the foul in the process of doing that. Dabo. Richmond dropping back defensively now. Trying to hold what they have. Down the right side, that's too heavy. Goal kick. Red Army cheered by that. Still goalless between Greenville and Northern Colorado. They're approaching halftime in the 41st minute. Early goal for Tormenta against Lexington. 1-0 Tormenta in the 12th minute. In Statesboro, Georgia, that goal in the 8th minute. Scored by Gabriel Rodriguez. Boy, Lexington had a tremendous offseason on paper. Signed a ton of talent. And they were widely expected to be one of or maybe the best team in the league this year. Big expectations after the recruitment they did in the offseason. It's been a very difficult start to the year for them, and so far it's continuing tonight, even though it's very early in that game. Obviously lots of time for them to turn that result around, but not the beginning they wanted, either to that game or to this season. 
Richmond. Can they find that fourth goal? Sirikowski after this. Dabo there first. Back to his keeper, Aviles. Inside the final five of the 90. Free kick given away by O'Dwyer. Uh, he's motioning, he got all ball. Obviously, Islen Pexenar saw it differently. Richmond's next game after this will be away to forward Madison in the first Henny Derby of the season. They would love to go into that rivalry game on the back of their first win in nine months. It was a series that was dominated by forward Madison last year as they won all three. That runs under the feet of Cromwell. Frustrating for him and for Fuego, who might have had something down that left side if he could have commanded it. Instead, it's out for a Richmond throw, which they'll be not in a great hurry to take with four minutes plus stoppage time remaining. Really good control in close quarters by Joao Gumiro. Oh, that was a bit loose from Griffin Garnett, and it is a throw for Richmond. Central Valley claiming their player didn't touch it. Assistant referee on the far side said otherwise. Maybe a chance for Fuego here. Forward they roam with Siobhan John Brown. Ashkenaf Apollon, can he keep it in? He does so far. Apollon with a red shirt right in his face. Now Cromwell switching onto his left. Tackled out of play by Bill Hart. Solid defending by Bill Hart. He's been on the pitch the entire 87 minutes. Still has the energy for that lunge and slide tackle. Trying to help his team see this out. Fuego trying to rally themselves for one more push for a late equalizing goal. Haven't posed as much threat over the last half an hour since they took the lead in the 58th minute. And again, they have such a short bench right now and such limited options to change things when they need to. That's understandable, perhaps. The bench figures to grow and become much deeper as the year goes on. And they're still not out of this yet. On the edge of the area. Chris Heckenberg, Apollon, swings one, back post, really good ball. Defended away, only to the edge of the box, and then Vasquez strikes off ahead and out. It'll be a corner for Fuego as they continue to push late on. Best attacking sequence for them in quite a while. Apollon, gorgeous ball to the back post, really good defensive header, and then pulled back for Vasquez, who scored that beautiful header in the 58. That was a good strike as well. Maybe Hara had it covered if it had been on target, but the defender in the way instead. It'll be an outswinging corner by Abdul Razak Cromwell. Cromwell drives it all the way to the top of the box where it's flicked away. And I'm not sure if that was intended to be a right-footed strike by Omar Limus. Didn't catch it if so. And then given away to Richmond. We're being told there will be an additional eight minutes of stoppage time. So Fuego certainly still have time to find a third goal. But Richmond, of course, they could find a fourth. O'Dwyer's on a hat trick. That's off him last. And a throw for the visitors in the final minute of the 90, but certainly not the final minute of the match. On the right side, stretching was Garnett. Big leap for that ball. Fawole just used his body to come down with it. I think he thought there was a whistle. He stopped playing for a moment. Fuego bench frustrated with him. I think Fawole thought he'd been whistled for a foul for his body positioning in winning that ball. The referee did not blow the whistle. Maybe he heard a whistle from the stands. Fuego fortunate they at least kept it. Switch to the right to nobody in particular. It falls instead to Sirakowski, and then he loses it. 
Fuego have it back, building some pressure here late. Here's a Pollen and Vasquez. Cromwell into the middle, blocked out, corner. Another set piece as we enter those eight additional, additional minutes of stoppage time, presented by Greenswell Growers. You can sense the nerves from Richmond. A lot of these players were here last year. They know how long it's been since they won a game. They're so desperate to break that long spell. They still have a ways to go to see this out. Corner swung in by Mendiola this time. Punched by Hara, straight up into the air. Still a loose ball, he punches again. At the edge of the area, put back in the mix. Full Wole's turnaround try. It is a goal kick. Wasn't sure if it deflected off someone, apparently not. Wole did decently to use his body to shield it initially, but then couldn't make the contact he wanted and unable to guide it on target. Another moment survived by Richmond. Again, you can't fault Fuego's effort and their belief and desire. They have fought all the way tonight. This is flicked forward though. Chance for Richmond to roam forward, seeking their fourth. Here's Bill Hart on his left, deflected away. Not sure if he was going for goal there. And then taken off Gomiro's toes. Hustling over to cover was Dakota Barnathan. Back for Hara, who first times it long. Sirakowski leaping, beaten in the air by Dabo. Back for Aviles, who wants to get it forward as quickly as possible. Vasquez touched it back for Cromwell. Crossfield ball, and now the second ball falls right to Mendiola. Mendiola scooping it into the box. Rolls all the way across the face, allowed to run out by Vasquez. It is another corner for Fuego. Vasquez has been really dangerous at that striker spot tonight. Scored one goal in the middle of lots of other attacks, especially in this second half. Mendiola lines up another in-swinger. Third minute of stoppage time, still about five and a half remaining. Mendiola, back post. The header was won by Fawole, but again, he couldn't guide it on target. Goal kick for Richmond. Player staying down for a moment for the kickers. You can see the potential that Joshua Fawole has. Played for Maryland Bobcats in Nisa last year. Really good size, really good strength. It's just been a little rough, a little raw since coming on today. Hasn't been able to create much end product so far. Never know though, still could have a big chance fall to him in these final four plus minutes of stoppage time. Sirakowski after that, hacked up the pitch. Mendiola, not the tallest, out jumped for that. Bill Hart, looked like it came off him last, let's see. Nope, throw in for Central Valley. So he was trying to claim it was theirs. There's Gomiro, beautiful touch from him. Bill Hart navigating through space. And now he goes forward. Bill Hart still. Black shirts all around. Skips around all of them. Vignals and O'Dwyer. And he'll do the smart thing and keep it. Halfway through the additional eight minutes of stoppage time. Richmond continuing to lead thanks to O'Dwyer's brace. Bill Hart contributing as well. Long ball down the left. Touched away by Lemus. O'Dwyer though, able to shield it. And then helps it down the line, takes the contact and the foul. That's precious for Richmond. They have a free kick and the clock continues to tick away. They take it short and they'll take their time as much as possible. O'Dwyer, Schenfeld, exchanging with Gomiro. Schenfeld, some fancy step overs. Mendiolo earns the throw for Central Valley. And 
Richmond really incensed at that decision. And a yellow card will be shown for descent. Shenfeld booked in the 96th minute. He's the only player on the pitch who's on a card. They subbed off their other two who had been booked earlier. That was Vaughn and Boshua. And now Richmond have a throw in front of their bench. And despite that lengthy stoppage time, time is beginning to grow short for Fuego. Richmond doing a really fine job of running down this clock, killing off this game. Still have a couple more minutes to navigate. O'Dwyer in the corner. Trying to flick it off a defender for a corner kick. Central Valley players smartly get out of the way, and it's a goal kick instead. Two minutes to go. And Aviles needs to be in a hurry. Can they create one more chance late here, Central Valley? Punted forward. Should be simple for Hara. And is. Red Army waiting nervously behind that corner, hoping to celebrate victory for the first time since last July. Booted down the pitch, taken by Aviles. Flips it out in front of him, kicks it long. It's got to go forward for Fuego. Fawole keeps it in, Schenfeld hammers it away. It's a really good punt, too, as it stays in play. Has to be dealt with. Aviles again. Final minute of the eight. Final minute of 98. One more minute for Richmond to hang on. One more minute for Fuego to find a late miracle. Central Valley bench wanted a foul. They don't get one. Fawole takes it away. It's in a maze of bodies. Flick back, though. Here come Fuego one more time. Through the middle of the pitch, spread wide for Apollon. Apollon toward the backside, diving header away. Comes back to the edge of the area. Mendiola spreads it back, put into the middle. Cleared as far as the edge of the box. Siobhan John Brown tries to dance his way in, tries to give it along. It's out for a goal kick. And big roars from this home crowd. They think they're nearly there. Omar Lemus not quite able to stretch in time. And we have had the eight minutes. And all eyes are on Islen Pexinar. One more goal kick for Pablo Hara. That's it. After nine months without a win, it's a red dawn in Richmond. The kickers take three points for the first time in 280 days. It ends tonight. Richmond kickers three, Central Valley Fuego two. Great game. Fuego just running out of steam over the final half an hour, but gave a really good account of themselves and showed what they could be as they get bodies back and healthy and develop some of this young talent they have. But it's Richmond Kickers night for the first time since July 1st, 2023. They get to celebrate all three points. We'll come back and wrap things up in a moment from City Stadium. We would not have a business today if it weren't for the support of many, many people within the Richmond community. To me, we're working as a team to enhance the quality of life for all residents. It's about you're being the best that you can be. It's about enriching the lives of people in your community. There's a reason why we have the tagline Nourish, because it's really about nourishing the lives of the people that work for us and the people that we serve. That's what the UCROPS brand stands for. Health, suddenly that word seems more important these days. 
as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com slash primary care to connect with the provider today. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the high five strangers guy. Game winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so he can focus on what he does best smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Full-time highlights from City Stadium after another great game between these two sides. Richmond took the lead in the 18th minute. Chandler O'Dwyer heading home. A great cutback from the end line by Simon Fitch. In the 32nd, Richmond gave it back as Pablo Hara playing a square ball to Griffin Garnett, whose touch let him down, and he handed it straight to Robert Coronado, who rolled it into the open goal. It was 1-1 at the break. In the 58th minute, Central Valley surged into the lead. What a good header at the near post by Zahir Vasquez. Off a neat cross from Omar Lemus. Those two combined brilliantly, but just three minutes later, Richmond were level. It was Bill Hart and Vignoles combining ever so well. Look at this ball from Vignoles outside of the foot. First time finish from Bill Hart under the keeper and in. It was 2-2 in the 61st. And then Richmond would find what turned out to be the winner in the 73rd minute as Chandler O'Dwyer would eventually grab his second of the night after Bill Hart rallied the crowd following that second goal. Bill Hart was in the middle of this too. His initial shot started all the chaos. Vignoles as well off a of body. What a good finish from Chandler O'Dwyer. We saw some great goals tonight in what was a great game. And O'Dwyer takes the plaudits and congratulations and he takes our man of the match award tonight as well, which is presented by Kiter. Two goals and spearheading at least the finishing of this attack for Richmond. Three goals in a week for him after he scored on Tuesday in that cup match as well. So quite a week for Chandler O'Dwyer, quite a night for him and his teammates as they taste victory for the first time since July 1st. And Chandler O'Dwyer, we're not done hearing about him because he also provides our play of the match tonight, which is presented by Courtyard by Marion. And it was this winning goal. Again, Bill Hart and then Vignoles. Bang, that's so good. That's really a difficult finish. Hit it with his laces too, which makes it even tougher. It's so difficult to control a ball like this, especially when it comes at you this quickly, but his finish was unerring. Back toward that far corner. So well done. He deserves all the congratulations tonight. And a delighted night for him and for everyone in red in Richmond. Again, Central Valley Fuego, we expect lots of good things and better things for them ahead, but was not their night here tonight. For our entire great production crew, I'm Donnie Barnes. Hope you enjoyed it. From City Stadium tonight in Richmond, Virginia, it finished. Richmond Kickers 3, Central Valley Fuego 2. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.